we can take our seats, we'd like to move into the um, CRA meeting, please. Okay, good evening once again. It is it, it is now eight thirty five, thirty eight forty in the evening. Uh, we're here at seven ninety Homestead Boulevard. I'd like to call the order of the community redevelopment agency meeting. Uh, Madam Clerk, call roll. Board Member Fairfield McCormick? Yes. Board yes. Member Maldonado? Yes. Board yes. Member Shelley? Yes. Board yes. Member Warman? Here. Board Member Williams? Present. Vice Chairman Burgess? Here. Chairman Bateman? Here. Uh, first item, uh, deletions and or deferrals. Any? Exists? No? Okay. Approval of the minutes, December 14th. Move it. Move it. Thank you. Sure, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Uh, Any nays? Item carries. Next item, new business. Uh, sponsors, uh, sponsorship request for a waiver of fee. Entertain a motion to, to approval of a sponsorship request for a waiver of fees. Move it. Okay, second. Second. Staff report. Good evening, uh, Chairman and uh, members of the board. I didn't say what fees. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, I, they're going to be using a little part of Lozner Park, so they, um, they actually sent us a letter that's a part of your packet, what they're, they're expecting. Uh, staff is seeking direction regarding the Antique Automobile Club of America's request that the City of Homestead provide support and services for a classic antique automobile show to be held on Chrome Avenue Saturday, March 10, 2012. The Antique Automobile Club of America is requesting that the City of Homestead provide police and security for the event, barricades for street closures, waiving of permit fees, um, and portalettes. The event will be held on Chrome Avenue from Northwest 2nd Street to Maui Drive on March 10th uh, from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. The estimated cost of the request is about $1,000. Thank you, sir. Questions from Council? No questions from Council? I'll open the public hearing. Any questions from the public, please approach the podium. Seeing here, no questions from the public, I'll close the public hearing. Any final questions from Council? Madam Clerk, roll call. Board Member Maldonado? Yes. Board Member Shelley? Yes. Board Member Warman? Yes. Board Member Williams? Yes. Board Member Fairfort McCormick? Yes. Vice Chairman yes. Burgess? Yes. Chairman Bateman. Yes. The motion carries. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, tab 3, item B, uh, Commercial Enhancement Program disperse, Disbursement Requestment by Paramount Property Development. Entertain a motion to move it on. I move it, Mayor. Thank you, Jim. Second. Second. Thank you. Staff report. The staff recommends approval of request by Paramount Property Developers to utilize $30,000 of the Commercial Enhancement Program monies to facilitate the relocation to 744 and 810 Southwest 1st Street of their new tenant, Kim Ring Inc., a manufacturer of innovative, cost-effective filters used in diverse applications in air pollution control, gas cleaning functions, and liquid cleaning functions. The location is within the CRA. Kimmery Inc. is leasing approximately 25,000 square feet of space at 744 and 810 Southwest 1st Street, which is owned by Paramount Property Developers. Kimmery Inc. is re relocating and consolidating their manufacturing capabilities, bringing over 35 jobs to the southwest section of Homestead. The $30,000 will offset half the cost of exterior and interior repairs to the building, a sewer connection, and fencing. There's also a companion car, 370, uh, that's coming from the tenant, Kimmering. The total contribution for the relocation will be $75,000. Thank you, sir. Questions from council? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yes, Mr. Uh, to the uh, persons uh, that are receiving these monies, can I ask you a question about your employment? Um, what kind of persons are you looking for to be employed? <laughs> at this new location. Can you speak up a little bit, please? I'll try. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, what, what kind of uh, persons are you looking for to be employed at your facility? Well, we've hired uh, quite a few people. Your name address for oh, my name is Mary Keenan. I live at 2235 Southeast 20th Avenue Homestead. Uh, in answer to your question, um, 
we are going to be looking to hire some non-skilled personnel. Uh, we're currently bringing to Homestead 30 employees. Um, just to give you a little bit of a, an update on Kemri. Kemri has been in business um, in the Perrine area for over 39 area for 39 years. Uh, actually, I'd like to introduce uh, Chris Pedersen. He's the founder and CEO of the company. Uh, again, the product is uh, manufactured here in Florida and it is shipped throughout the globe. Uh, we, we will be introducing new products um, to um, our offerings and that will also uh, open doors for new employees. So we're going to be looking for non-skilled personnel as well as skilled personnel um, and that will be on an as-needed basis. Um, might I add or say, let me uh, thank you all for even considering to bring your uh, business in, uh, to the southwest area of Homestead, which is uh, very much needed. And I'm hoping that you will hire some persons who live over in that community. Well, that, that's our goal here. I um, mean, we, I have several of our team members here uh, joining me this evening, and currently one-third of our personnel lives in Homestead. Okay, very good. And uh, we're very excited, and I really want to take the opportunity on behalf of Kemre and the entire Kemre team, I would like to thank um, the mayor and all of the uh, committee members here for um, allowing us to come here and to introduce Kemre. We're all extremely excited, and um, believe me, uh, it's a company to be proud of. Um, I'm not, you know, this, this product is, is manufactured here in southern Florida and has been for 39 years. It's the product made in the USA and is shipped throughout the globe. What we do is we make a thermoplastic mesh, which I believe Sharon distributed, and it's for pollution abatement. And it, it's really, it's, it's, it's a wonderful opportunity for, for us as well to be coming into Homestead. And again, I want to thank you on behalf of Kemray. I'd like Chris to maybe, you know, say a few words as well. Yes, good evening. Chris Patterson, 6149 Paradise Point Drive, uh, Palmetto Bay. 86 years, that's how long my family's been here. My grandfather came down to this area, southwest uh, area, in 1926. Uh, they're originally farmers, then bankers, and uh, now I started this company. Uh, and uh, the uh, mission of this uh, Kemri is to leave the earth a better place uh, for future generations. We do that by providing our technology for pollution control around the world. Um, and we double our space, we're moving in, we anticipate doubling it again or close to that in the near future with uh, expansion. So it's uh, good to be down here and it's good to continue my association with South Florida. Thank you. Thank you. I just have a couple of thank yous. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, Yvonne Knowles. I've been working with Yvonne for over a year and she was very persistent and, and you know, thank you Yvonne. I'd like to also thank uh, Joe Cugino and Rick Mullins. I mean, they've really been fantastic. Um, it's been great working with the two guys. Um, I'd also like to, to thank um, the new member of the CRA, uh, Rick Amaretta. He, so he really uh, pushed things along fairly quickly for us. And um, last but not least, I'd like to thank uh, Jimmy Accurzio, um from the Capri restaurant because he encouraged me to continue working with everyone down here in Homestead because we were looking in other areas. So everything worked out well for, for us, um, you know, as well as, as Homestead. Well, we thank you very much for, for bringing your business to Homestead. Um, we will do everything we can to, to make you happy, and, uh, and I'm sure you're going you're gonna to run a good business over there. Thank you very much for coming to Homestead. Thank you. Robert Barnes, President of Homestead Main Street, 43 North Crumb, the Old Town Hall. 
this is one of our side projects with Main Street. Uh, Yvonne brought this to me, and we realized this is an opportunity to get jobs in Homestead. And uh, we're following that same thing that the mayor is pushing. And uh, so we spent a year, we helped them connect with different landlords and peoples. We looked at buying building buildings, buying buildings and renting buildings, every aspect we could look at. And then once we got organized and understood what we were doing, we turned it over to the city. Uh, Rick Amarato did a great job putting it together with the uh, tenants that they selected. And uh, we backed out of it. We thank the city and we support this project. Thank you, Robert. Any final questions from Council before I open the public hearing? Okay, the public hearing is now open. Anyone with the public, please come to the podium. Hearing none, seeing none, I'll close the public hearing. Any final questions from Council? Madam Clerk? Roll call. Vice Chairman Berger? Yes. Board Member Fairclough McCormick? Yes. Board Member Schelling? Yes. Board Member Williams? Yes. Board Member Maldonado? Yes. Board Member Warman? Yes. Chairman Bateman? Yes. The motion carried. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Tab 4, Commercial Enhancement Program Disbursement Request, by, also by uh, Kimberly. Thank Second. you. Second. Thank you. Staff report. The staff recommends approval of the request by Kim Ying to utilize $45,000 of the Commercial Enhancement Program monies to facilitate their relocation to 744 and 810 Southwest 1st Street. Kim Ying is a manufacturer of innovative cost-effective filters used in a diverse applications in air pollution control, gas cleaning functions, and liquid cleaning functions. Kim Ray Inc. is leasing approximately 25,000 square feet of space at 744 and 810 Southwest 1st Street, which is owned by Paramount Property Developers. Kim Ray Inc. is relocating, consolidating their manufacturing capabilities, bringing over 35 jobs to the Southwest section of Homestead. The $45,000 will offset half the cost of the installation of a new electric service inside the building necessary for the fabrication of their filters. See also companion car 369. The total contribution to the relocation is $75,000. Thank you, sir. Questions from council? Yeah, Hearing no questions from council, I'll open the public hearing. Questions from the public? Hearing no questions from the public, I'll close the public hearing. Final questions from council? Madam Clerk, call the roll. Board Member Fairclough McCormick? Yes. Board Member Shelley? Yes. Board Member Williams? Yes. Board Member Maldonado? Yes. Board Member Warman? Yes. Vice Chairman Berger? Yes. Chairman Bateman. Yes. The motion carried. Thank you, Madam Clerk. And thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, I, I, I think if we can, uh, the money that we have available, if we can continue to bring business to Homestead at that level, it's a win-win for all of us. Okay, uh, the next item on uh, five, uh, discussion item. Yes, oh, I'm sorry, please. Mayor Bateman, I'm sorry. They wanted to make one point that's really important as part of the, the, the council's agenda also. All work on their project is going to be local services. Okay. They're using only local suppliers and only local services in, in, in the construction of their that's, project. So that's music to our ears. Follows your, Thank your you. dictate. Thank you. Thank you so much. CRA uh, proposes a project uh, presentation. Uh, do, you, do you have a presentation? No, I just want to get us going. So yes, sir. Get you I home. understand. Get you home, right? <laughs> Again, I know uh, it's been a uh, very long night. If um, at any point you can't hear me because of the blowers, please let me know. Uh, I'm kind of torn between talking too loudly and making this microphone make that sound that we all don't like to hear and allow you to hear what I have to say. So, uh, But I'm going to try to be as quick and efficient as possible. I know it's been a long day. Uh, tonight we're, we're talking about proposed projects in the CRA. If you remember, during the budget process uh, we discussed there have been a, a significant number of projects that uh, have been proposed in the CRA that some were funded, some weren't funded, and uh, we were looking at how much those projects would cost that we would come back to you with those estimates and uh, start looking at the board's vision for uh, the future in the CRA and how they want to start allocating resources. So tonight's presentation uh, is we're going to go through the list. Um, I'm going to give you what each project is and what we estimate the cost to be. The majority of the estimates that you see were all done in-house by the city staff. 
The first project I'm going to talk about is the pump station, um, Blakely Park renovations, the Seminole Theater, downtown parking, the Flagler lot, uh, flight removal, Washington Avenue Phase 2, Southwest 4th Street scape and uh, roadway improvements, West Mallory uh, Drive sidewalk repairs and improvements, Chrome Avenue improvements, West Campbell Drive improvements, and uh, West Homestead Elementary School improvements. What we're looking from the board is really uh, some direction on uh, the vision the board has, some consensus on the priorities of these projects. Uh, not all of these projects uh, have to be funded in this year, uh, but we are looking for an idea of where you want to allocate some of your resources. Uh, again, some of these projects, although they are on a list of CRA projects, the city itself is putting together a complete list of all the capital improvements that they're going to be looking at from uh, this year to five years out. And some of these fall under other departments and, and there's possibility of other funding and I'll talk about that a little bit, especially at the end uh, of the presentation. Um, again, any direction that we can get from the, from the board would be very helpful, uh, whether or not they want to do things now, they want to do things a little bit later, or some of these projects they want us to find other funding sources for. The first project I'm going to talk about is Pump Station 1. Uh, this has been uh, budgeted prior, in prior years in the CRA budget. It's also been budgeted in DPW. Uh, this is the pump station that's located at the intersection of Lucy and Flagler. I don't know exactly where, but it is underneath that intersection somewhere. And increasing the capacity of this, of this pump station will allow us to develop, uh, do more development in the southwest. It's uh, an infrastructure project. Um, we estimate the cost for this to be about $500,000. Wakey Park Renovations. Uh, this is a park that's in the southwest. It's off of uh, 4th Street and uh, Redland Road. Um, we took a look at this, at, at this uh, park um, and some of the parks in the southwest. Uh, we looked at you know, possible scenarios of putting in top parks, putting in some, some new turf, restriping the, the track around and just renovating and bringing up the standards of the park for the people in that community. The estimated cost for something like this would be about $450,000. We also, we also included putting together some fitness stations as well around the track. The next one is the Seminole Theater renovation. Now, um, this renovation has been ongoing for many years in the CRA. Um, I know everybody's very familiar with this project. Uh, there have been some renovations done to it. It has sat dormant for, for many years. So we looked at what it would cost to finish the renovation, to look at whatever issues they may be inside of it because of its laying dormant, any sort of mitigation that we would have to do. Now, there is a wide range of costs that we're looking at. Uh, the plans that were originally developed, uh, if the board so chooses, you know, we could look at maybe a less ambitious plan, uh, but we do have a range of costs for this. We're looking at anywhere between 3.5 million and 6 million. I, I don't want to tell you it's going to cost 3 million to, to rebuild this and then have to come back and tell you it's 6 million. That's why there's a variance there. Again, if the board would, would say, you know, we have $2 million for this, we'd have to go and get plans and see what we could get for $2 million. We'd also, um, if this is something that the board wants to proceed with, we'd have to do a more detailed scoping. So we'd be asking for some monies allocated for the engineering and the architecture uh, plans that we would need to see exactly how much this would cost depending on the ambitions of the board. The next topic is downtown parking. Um, you know, uh, members of the board have come to me and discussed uh, the issue of parking in the downtown. Whether or not the Seminole Theater is something that's renovated, as the downtown grows, the issue of parking is, is going to be something that we're all going to have to take a look at. And there's many different aspects of parking that uh, you look at when you're, when you're trying to do economic development. Uh, the, the first one is usually location. 
And so you can see on this map uh, the heart of the downtown from 4th Street in the north all the way to Mallory in the south, Flagler in the east, Civic Court northeast. You have um, First Avenue in the west. Um, the most important thing is if we do, do parking in the downtown, how close is it to where people want to be? It's all about proximity to where the customer wants to go. So, uh, and there's a bunch of different types of parking that we, that we can discuss. And, and the first one that we looked at are parking garages. We, um, we did an estimate of what a 25,000 square foot footprint uh, would cost at 350 spaces in a building uh, about 70 feet tall. Uh, we believe a structure like that, depending on whether or not there's land acquisition costs, or um, any other mitigations that we have to do, would cost somewhere between $4.5 million and $6 million. Again, location is paramount. If, if this is something that the board wants to move forward with, we'd have to take a look at possible private-public partnerships. Uh, another issue that, that we'd have to consider is whether or not uh, a facility like this is going to be paid parking or not, because that does change a little bit of how we fund uh, parking facilities. Again, we'd have to look at location, possible land acquisition, and possible public-private partnerships. But again, this is something that, uh, you know, whether or not you do the Summer Theater or whether or not other uh, projects come online in the downtown, parking is something that uh, the board is going to be taking, I think, I believe we'll be taking a look at in the future. To continue with parking, this is the what I've been told to name the Flatler lot. We no longer call it the Arsenic lot because that's bad branding. But this is the uh, lot that is next to um, Flagler. You have Civic Court in the, uh, in the northeast part of it. We looked at making this a surface lot. So paving this, lighting it, doing the streetscape, and um, striping it. A parking lot with 350 spaces, we estimate would cost approximately $425,000. Now, there has been discussion uh, on the dais about environmental mitigation of this site. I know there was a study done in the past, uh, talking with staff, the technical staff here. Um, it's not an undevelopable piece of property. Yes, there are levels of arsenic in it. If, if, the board, if the board or the city did choose to develop the site, you could build on it. You just have to mitigate the environmental issues. You have to make sure that any of the uh, soil that's removed is, dis is disposed of um, in the proper manner. Uh, so capping it is the best and cheapest way to mitigate the issues on here, but you could cap it, and if you wanted to develop something on it down, down the road, you could do that as well. Um, again, you know, you get the same amount of parking as a lot as the lot that we discussed, the garage that I discussed earlier. But you, as you can see, it is farther away from the core downtown, so you have to take into account the uh, proximity to locations of where people want to go. The next one is a blight removal. Um, I. I know there was some discussion on the dais about some of the buildings within all of Homestead, not just the CRA. A code enforcement's gone around and taken a look at a bunch of the different buildings. These multi-use uh, buildings are within the CRA. They've gone through the condemnation process, and uh, they are considered unsafe structures. And code enforcement is looking for funding to tear these down and make them just grass lots. Uh, we estimate the cost of that to be $150,000. Just for the record, these buildings are at uh, 154 Southwest 4th Street, 206 Northeast 2nd Road, 316 Southwest 4th Court, 416 Northeast 1st Road. The next project is Washington Avenue Phase 2. Uh, you can see by the map, um, the little red section on the bottom is, is, is Phase 1. That's the streetscape improvement that we've done from Mallory to 2nd Avenue, the new median in the middle, the uh, new streetscape and the new uh, plaza that's, been, that's um, there right on the uh, triangle end. This project is about expanding that streetscape from 2nd Avenue all the way to Campbell. Currently, there is a median from 2nd to 4th Street. We'd have to take a look at whether or not we could use that median or we'd have to upgrade it. Um, but we are looking at extending the entire streetscape all the way to Campbell. 
here you have uh, the median that's uh, between second and, and fourth. This is Fort to Campbell. As you can see, there's some areas don't have sidewalks, and some areas the sidewalks are uh, in disrepair, and there's no median uh, in the middle of the street. This is what the new streetscape looks like on Washington Avenue from Mallory to Second currently. And we estimate the cost of this project to be about $1.9 million. The next project is Southwest Poor Streetscape and Roadway Improvements. Uh, in the red, you have uh, Southwest 6th Avenue. On the, on the west, you have Redland Road. Uh, this is extending the streetscape that we currently have on 4th Street from 6th Avenue all the way to Redland. It also includes uh, curbing, sidewalks, and a retrofitting the antique light poles that are there now so that we can light them with the uh, Christmas lights every year. This here is looking west on si from 6th Avenue down 4th Street. Uh, you can see that uh, there's really just sidewalks. Um, some of them are in disrepair. Uh, there really isn't that much streetscape going down the street. This here are the planters and the new trees that are currently from 6th Avenue heading towards Chrome. We estimate, uh, oh, we also, uh, part of this project would be repaving the entire road as well. And uh, this is estimated at about a million dollars. Next project is West Mallory Drive sidewalk repairs and improvements. Um, if you take, a, if anybody goes down in uh, Mallory heading west, you will notice that the sidewalks are in some places in disrepair, in some places they're in decent condition, in some places they are non-existent. This is uh, just doing sidewalk uh, repair and maintenance on Mallory, trying to get it consistent and, and create a safe environment for pedestrians, as well as this is uh, one of the industrial corridors in the southwest, so we want to we give it uh, a little bit more of a sprucing up. We estimate the cost of something like this. And this is, again, one of those projects that we can find funding from possibly other departments and, and do it over uh, years. It doesn't have to be done right away, but it's, if it's a priority, it's something that we can put in the CIP over five years. Uh, right now, we're estimating about $200,000. Moving on to Chrome Avenue improvements. Originally, uh, there were some members of the board discussing how do we delineate the historic downtown from the rest of the city of Homestead. Uh, there were discussions about um, maybe a roundabout, some sort of features on either end. Um, the staff in discussions, this is a uh, state road. And we all know about the trucks that go down it. And uh, we really don't control our destiny that much on, on a state road like this. And the probability of the state approving the roundabout, we cannot guarantee that. So we, we have taken a look at other, other artistic elements that we can put in maybe on the sidewalk on the side of the road that are in keeping with the historical nature of the downtown. Uh, we estimate doing something like that to be uh, about $675,000. The next project would be West Campbell Drive Streetscape and Roadway Improvements. Basically, this project is if you take a look uh, at Campbell Drive from Chrome looking east, the city has uh, put in a new median, a new streetscape, all the way to the turnpike and past that. This is extending that westward. Now, um, there's definitely a different use on Campbell heading west than you have heading east. Uh, the east is, is more commercial uh, retail, and it gets more residential as you head west. This is a picture. You're standing at the corner of Redland Road looking east. Uh, you see the swales, uh, and uh, there's no median in the middle. This is uh, a picture of some of the new streetscape that you have uh, heading east. Now, this would also include repaving the street as well um, and looking at what we, what we would need to do to possibly widen it, that sort of thing. We estimate this entire project would cost about $4 million. And the uh, final project that we're going to discuss is the West Homestead Elementary Improvements. 
I've had some preliminary meetings with the uh, school district, and they're looking for a partnership with the CLA to upgrade uh, West Homestead Elementary, um, possibly making it a K through eight magnet school. Um, just to give everybody an idea of what we're talking about, you have on the right Redland Road, on the uh, on the south Lucy Street or Southwest 328th Street. Uh, it's currently at K through six. What they're proposing is an upgrade to the facility, the tearing down of some buildings, rebuilding uh, new classrooms. Um, also um, putting in some other new facilities for the students and really making this a math, science, and technology academy. Again, K through eight. And uh, just so that uh, we all know exactly what they're talking about, this is the description that I received from the school district. Uh, it's a possible conversion of West Homestead Elementary to a K-8 facility with a programmatic focus on math, science, and technology. The concept entails, among other elements, demolition and replacement of select classrooms and administrative space, reorientation of the school's entrance to Lucy Street, and renovation of Building 8. We envision that the reorientation of the school entrance to Face Lucy would greatly enhance the visibility of the facility to the surrounding community. And they also propose using some of the administrative space uh, after hours to host community activities. Activities. Um, this is a model that they've been looking to do in other parts of Dade. They'd be asking that the CRA finance the entire project and then they would pay half of the project back to us. So the total cost of the project we would finance somehow and they would owe us a deferred payment to pay back half the cost of the upgrades. The uh, estimates for this are between $4 million and $6 million. Um, again, there are many elements to something like this, and you know, depending on the ambitions and the desire of the board, we can look at what, what exactly they'd be willing to do. Uh, again, it's a question of consensus and, and a, a bit of a philosophy direction from the board. These are all of the projects listed. We have a range, uh, the total cost of all of these projects would be between $21 million and $27 million. Uh, again, some of these uh, can be funded through other departments or they could be phased in over years. We're just really looking for some direction and um, uh, an idea of what the ambitions of the board are. As far as funding, the CRA has $5.3 million available in the CIP fund currently to fund projects. Um, again, and I just showed you a sheet that said $27 million. Uh, there are, depending on the ambitions of the board, possible additional funding sources, whether it's grants, whether it's other city departments, state, federal funding, and then there's also the financing option of this. I do just want to point out that some of the projects may require approval from the county. We'd have to work with uh, them as well. Uh, but this is the nuts and bolts of the projects that we all discussed earlier uh, in the summer. Um, their costs. If there's something that the board feels we need to scope out a little bit more, maybe look for underfunding sources, that sort of thing, uh, we'd welcome that direction. Again, we really wanted to start the conversation about what's out there and how do we want to allocate our resources. And I do have the technical staff. If there's any questions regarding a specific project, we will be able to do our best to answer it for you. Mayor? Thank you. Yes, as well. Please. Can I make a suggestion? Sure. Um, now that we've had the introduction, perhaps we could schedule a workshop and where we could sit down and get more information and talk about each project. And this is my suggestion. Sounds good. Additional comments? I'm sorry. <coughs> you said what now? Come back to the table to discuss yeah, this? Yeah, she asked to, to, to yeah. move to a workshop where we sit down and, uh, you know, go through each project and discuss it. $27 million, and I can tell you at 9.15 at night, we're not going to get very far. <laughs> Whatever you want to do, I'm willing to cover that. 
I don't know. Maybe we want to do some. I'm starting to see some dots. I don't know if it's these eyes here, <laughs> but I kind of want to concur with what's, what's going on here. Definitely looking forward. I think this for this council, this this committee, this is one of the biggest tasks I think will be uh, taken on in this this year. Um, and I definitely want to make sure it gets the attention that it needs. Uh, I will somewhat concur. Much to say. Just one quick comment. I, I concur that it would take forever to get this done tonight, but I think the board needs to keep in their mind that we are under the gun up in Tallahassee this year, and we need to make sure we get this funding and, and get it out there ASAP, or perhaps we won't have the funding at all. The monies could be gone. Uh, and, and the CRA is under the gun, so let's just keep that in mind as we move forward and make sure that we expedite this process so that we don't end up in a really bad spot. And I can I can really reinforce that a little bit. On my return flight from uh, Tallahassee, I happened to sit next to one of the senators who was who was offering this up on the floor, Miguel Diaz de La Patia, and it's very real. It's very real that the county will do their best to withdraw this. Mayor, my, my question would be, and in, in, in importance of time in taking these projects, how soon would this committee uh, basically set up a workshop? And, and I guess, you know, I know this staff is ready to jump on it. They've been waiting for us. So I think if we're going to respond to it, when is this council ready to join on? I mean, I'm on board. I'm ready to go. ASAP. Um, you know, next week, beginning next week. I know, I think we're going to, Tallahassee is next week, so just one F1. Two weeks? Okay. I think next week would be a good thing then. <laughs> Mayor, if I could suggest Monday, because Tuesday I've got back-to-back -back meetings already scheduled, so. I'm good, by then. Monday. Monday. Monday evening. 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 Monday all right. I'll bring the coffee. Okay. Good deal. That's not 4.30 in the morning. That's 4.30 in the evening. <laughs> All right. Any further discussion before we call this? Okay. All in favor to? Uh, Aye. Thank you, staff. I'm really, literally.